Hello, beautiful. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Welcome to Wife Life with Gail. It is Thursday, and you know what goes down here on Thursday. Wife Life with Gail goes down here on Thursday. And tonight, I want to talk to you about a growing topic that people are kind of like just sweeping under the rug. Tonight, I'm going to talk about being your husband's roommate. How are you in a sexless marriage and are doing nothing about it? Did you know that 25% of marriages are sexless? We're bringing sexy back. We're bringing sexy back. Let's get it started. Pardon, won't you give it up? What you invited? Yes. Tonight on Wife Life with Gail, we're going to talk about people that are in a sexless marriage and doing absolutely nothing about it and be, has become very complacent. But before we get started tonight, do me a favor. Make sure that you're hitting the subscribe button and letting all my one sexy wife know that Wife Life goes down here every single Thursday at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. And so tonight we're going to talk about being roommates with your spouse. And being in a sexless marriage, who would have thought that 25% of marriages, and that is growing, saying that, yep, we're in a sexless marriage and we're going to just make it work. So that is mind blowing to me after being married for as long as I am to be in a sexless marriage just wouldn't work for me. But it's evidently working for so many marriages, especially in America, you share houses, you share cars, you share credit cards, you share children, you share so many different things, but you're not sharing sex. Some people are even saying that they're living in separate rooms and they're enjoying it more than they did when they were sleeping in the same bed as their spouse. This was mind blowing when I was sitting back talking to a group of uh, marriage professionals like myself, and they were just saying that they have been coaching and counseling so many marriages that said, you know what, we're just going to be roommates. We don't want a divorce. We like the convenience of being married. We have so many assets that are shared that we're just going to live as roommates and make it work. I, I, like Again, as you can tell, I am blown away that this is actually happening and people are okay with that. And let me just tell you, if you're in a sexless marriage and you're living as roommates and you want something more, I'm here to tell you that you can have something more. You're just going to have to roll up your sleeves and go to work. And so let's look at what a sexless marriage looks like. There's no physical touch at all. There's no fighting. And when you say, well, Gail, why do we want to fight? Well, let me just tell you, when you have two adults that um, think different, um, you're going to have some disagreements in your marriage. It's just normal behavior to have disagreements with your spouse. And so therefore, if you're not having any disagreements in your marriage, there is no communication. There is no oneness. There's no wholeness at all. The lack of intimacy, no hand holding, no, you know, kisses, no hugs, no nothing. Again, you're just living like two college roommates. Like I used to live with two of my roommates when I was in college, just hanging out. You, you do the, the bare minimum kind of things together. And actually with my roommates, we did a lot together because we used to share clothes and all kind of stuff. Because, you know, when you're in college, most of the time you're poor. So you used to share hair products, all kind of different things. You know what I mean? But, but, but if you're living in a household and the only thing you're sharing is the last name and children and assets. Is that truly a marriage? Like, this is mind blowing to me. There's no quality time together. There's no deep conversation. There's nothing in common besides just, like I said, sharing the last name and all the assets. And really, when you sit back and Think about it. Is that truly the will of God for your marriage? Is that truly the will of God for your covenant? Because when he created sex and he created intimacy, he wanted you to go beyond the surface. He wanted you to give a part of yourself, a give and take thing, 
right? And so, uh, what what does the profession consider a sexless marriage? That is not engaging on regular sex at least two to three times a week. Now, there are some exclusions. If you're having some physical challenges, if your spouse is having some physical challenges and you guys agree that, hey, we need to put this off or this is painful and those kind of things, I can understand that. But when you have just decided that, hey, you know, this is not working for me, he, this is not... I'm just telling you, you open the door for infidelity. You open the door for so many different things to go wrong in your marriage. And staying in a marriage that is has no intimacy, has no conversation, has have no sex, just to say that you're married, is not the best thing for you. It's not good for you mentally, and it's not good for you physically. And I've talked many a time in a couple of videos about the benefits of sex, right? And I also have um, talked about infidelity, financial infidelity, and um, I'm going to be talking about regular infidelity, you know, in um, my next week's um, session. But again, it this really pains me, and I'm, you know, I'm here to you know talk about it and to help you. But again, it's mind blowing that so many people are okay with living with their spouse as a roommate in a sexless marriage. And I'm not just saying just go have sex just to say that you're not in a sexless marriage. What I'm saying is marriage is so much more than just sex, than just the physical act of it. But it's more, it's really important. And I will tell you, it is not healthy just to stay in this situation. It's really not. I was talking to some of my other colleagues. We were exploring why are people okay in settling for this? And I understand that we're in a, a pandemic. I understand that finances, you know, have taken a blow in some households with unemployment and all those different kind of things. But I just want you to know that you're worth more. You're valuable. And you don't have to settle for this. Because marriage was created to be something beautiful and wonderful and amazing. And so if you're in a sexless marriage and you're living as a roommate, I want you to really try some of these things I'm about to give you in order to kind of move the needle. Have a, first of all, have a candid conversation with your spouse and tell them how you really feel about the situation. Tell them that it's hurting you that you no longer share your marital bed. Tell them that it's hurting you that you guys no longer have intimacy. Tell them that it's hurting you that you no longer having candid conversations. Tell them that you love them and that you want to go back to where you guys was when you first fell in love. That's the first thing. The second thing is you both have to see each other in a different light. And what do I mean by that? If if uh, time apart has grown, you know, and made you guys live as roommates, if hurt feelings and infidelity has came into the marriage, figure out a way to work through those things and forgive one another and start afresh. So you need to start seeing each other in a different light, in a different way. Because again, you can heal from infidelity. You can heal from hurt words. You can heal from all of those different things, right? The next thing is Add some fun back into your marriage. So many people get bogged down with the day-to-day -day things, the more serious things, the more, more mundane things. Got to pay bills, got to do this with the kids, got to cook, got to clean. But you forget to have fun. Life is so short and we're focusing in on the wrong things. Having fun, laughing, dancing, roller skating, holding, all of those things that you did to make you fall in love with that person, start implementing some of those things back into your marriage, right? The next thing is let go of the need to be right. A lot of times the roommate situation and the lack of sex and intimacy in your marriage comes from you not wanting to, to, to lose but you're losing anyway, right? Pick and choose your battles. You don't always have to be right. 
If you have to say, I'm sorry, or forgive me, or whatever, in order to move past this, be the one that takes control of the covenant. It's just not a piece of paper. It just wasn't a lavish wedding. It's just not a wedding ring. It's a covenant. It's a covenant that you made with God. So be the first one. And don't you don't always have to be right. The next thing is make sure that you begin to put your marriage and your covenant first. Above everything else, above your children, your career, being right, uh, your family, your friends. Because again, you said to death do us part. And so many of us forget, forget those words. And we said for better, for worse, for sickness and the health. We said all of those things. And we have allowed the enemy to come in and to really mess up what the will of God was when we, he created those vows. So go back and fix those things. Even if you feel like it's not your fault. Even when you feel like it's not your fault. And the next thing and my last thing is become the best you you can become inside your marriage. Become the best you that you can become inside of your marriage. And what do I mean by that? Learn to take care of you. Learn to build yourself up. Learn to show up every single day for your marriage. Because your spouse is the only walking, talking, living, breathing person that you cut a covenant with on this earth. And I know it's hard. And I know you're like, Gail, um, I don't think it can be saved. You are still living under one roof. So therefore, it is still savable. It is still possible. I am on a mission to literally eradicate divorce. And you living in a roommate situation is one of the most unhealthiest things you can do. It's not the will of God for your marriage. Because you open up the door for infidelity. You open up the door for financial infidelity. You open up the door for you guys to be living separate lives. Even if you're under one roof, you open up the door for you to become jealous and hurt and all of these different things. And I understand that finances and splitting things and all of these things are, are hard but it's a lot easier to fix it, especially when you still love each other, especially if you, all you have to do is say, I'm sorry that I hurt you. I'm sorry that I stepped outside the marriage. I'm star sorry that I mishandled the finances. I'm sorry for calling you out of your name. I'm sorry. Whatever that is, make it right because living in the 25 percentile it's not a good place to be. What are you teaching your children? What are you teaching the world? And what are you teaching the people that are looking at you in this covenant? It's not healthy. And again, my, I come to you tonight just really heartbroken that this is what is going on and people are thinking it's okay. And people are thinking it's, that's the norm. It's not the will of God for you to be in a roommate situation, in a sexless marriage with someone that you cut a covenant with. So I admonish you to fix it. And if you need any support, if you need anyone to talk to, do me a favor, click the link below. I offer a free 15 minute discovery call and you like 15 minutes, Gail? Yes, 15 minutes, we can get a lot accomplished because I'm here to support you. I understand where you are, but I also understand how it is to come out. Again, I love you to pieces. I pray that you take these words that came out of my mouth and you use them as a catalyst to come out of that 25% that is growing every single day.
God loves you and so do I. I will see you next Thursday at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time right here on Wife Life with Gail. Have an amazing night. We're bringing sexy back. We're bringing sexy back. Let's get it started. I don't want you give it up.